Hi, I'm Scotty from Anthrax, and you are watching the Kerrang! Podcast. Hi Scott, welcome to the Krang Podcast. Uh, you're in the UK at the moment promoting your new album, Worship Music. Yes. Uh, how's it all going? It's going well. <laughs> um, my second day here, uh, um, every, so far so good. Everyone seems to be loving the music so far. Cool. Uh, Worship Music's your first album since, uh, first new studio album since 2003's We've Come For You All. That kind of puts you on par with Metallica for taking your time in the studio. I hope it puts us up part of Metallica in other ways as well, so <laughs> that's okay with me. You know, pe people think, well, people think whatever, I don't know what people think, but um, we, you know, when We've Come For You All came out in 2003, we toured that record until um, early 2005, and then we jumped right into our reunion tour, and then toured that until like October of 2006, so it's not like we've just been sitting around you know, not doing anything. We toured for over three years and then started writing. We spent two years writing this record and then we've actually been making it since the end of November last year. So in a sense, I haven't had a day off in six years is basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> How does worship music compare to past Anthrax albums then? What's the vibe? I don't know. Um, it's always been really hard for me to compare records. That's like, it, for me, that's like if you had a bunch of kids, it'd be like comparing your children. Um, which maybe people do that. I don't have any kids, so I, I don't know. But um, it, it's hard for me to do because they just all sound like Anthrax to me. It's all Anthrax. It's different times in my life. You know, I can look back over all these years being in the band and think about what was going. For me, it's more like what was going on in my life when we put that record out, and not so much as, as about like what the music is on that record. If that makes any sense. Um, it's really hard for me to compare it, compare it musically. It's it's Anthrax. It's what it sounds like, you know. Cool. I think after all these years, we, we we get to say that people say, "What's your new album sound like?" It sounds like an Anthrax record. <laughs> so it's the first record to feature uh, new vocalist Dan Nelson. How's he fitting in? Uh, Dan's amazing. Uh, he's 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 got an energy and he has an instrument, meaning his voice, that uh, is unlike any anyone I've ever worked with before. He's just got unbelievable power. Yeah, Dave Faulkner, who's previously worked with Evanescence and Slipknot, what's he kind of brought to the uh, the Anthrax melting pot? He's an amazing mixer. Uh, I've kind of known Dave for, for a while and we bumped into each other. Uh, we were playing a festival in Montreal last year. Dave happened to be there and we just had this conversation and it, he kind of, I don't know, it just stayed in the back of my mind and when we got to the point where we knew we were going to be ready to mix the record and I brought him up. I, I just thought like he, for some reason, the fit was perfect, and I, I thought he would just be great. And we sent him a song, and he sent us back a mix, and it was just spot on right from the start. And this is actually the first time I, I mean our record is being mixed right now at his studio in Louisiana, and I'm here like this is the first time I think in the history of this band that I'm not at a mix, so that we have just so much faith in the guy. Cool. Well, Corey Taylor from Slipknot told us that he nearly ended up singing on this album. Is that true? It is true. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's totally true. Um, I think it was around spring of 2007. Uh, we were in New York together uh, and me and Corey and our bass player Frankie did like some jam session at this club. And uh, it was like that night where he said, yeah, I'll do it. And we we're like, yeah, right. You know, like, sure you will, because now you'll be in three bands. Like, it just, you know, I, I didn't really take him seriously. And then the next day, we're at the Stone Sour show backstage, and, like, his manager is telling me, congratulations on your new singer. Like, he had a band meeting. He told Slipknot already. Like, it's all, it's happening. It's on. And we were like, holy shit. And, um, and then cut to a couple of months later, so he started writing, and we're emailing, you know, and telling him about the lyrics he's writing, he's sending me song titles, and it was pretty exciting to think that Corey was going to do the record. And, and then uh, in the summer of 2007, I was actually here in London, I, I went to see Metallica at Wembley Stadium, uh, I just hung out here for a few days, and then I was flying from here back to Chicago, where we were all going to meet in the studio for the first time with Corey, and get in the room and start playing these new songs, and I was super excited. And, I land in Chicago and I have all these phone messages, I, I turn my phone on and I have all these messages and it's our manager is basically saying, Corey's not coming. I'm like, oh, is this schedule, you know, changed or something? He's like, no, Corey's not coming. 
the, the, their record label went crazy and the window of opportunity that he had to be on this Anthrax album pretty much got, got closed and he ended up obviously not being able to do it. And then I was like, oh, I guess I'll just be flying home to LA then. And, uh, and we just decided, all right, whatever. It's a, it's a fucking bummer, but we're just gonna continue writing and hopefully things will work themselves out. And then just a couple of months later, we got Dan. So I, everything worked out great. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Scott. Your new album, Worship Music, is out in October. Uh, out in October, yes. Cheers.